President Trump says he is open to making a deal in his trade war with China, but only if it's what he calls a good deal, a fair deal for the United States. But what about the Americans who are getting hit hard in his trade war? I'm going to talk to two of them now. Bob Kylan is here. He is a wheat and sunflower farmer. He's from North Dakota. Also with me is Arnold Kamler. He's a CEO of Kent International, a bicycle company. We're so glad to have both of you on, gentlemen. Bob, let's start with you. Let's talk about your situation and what you think. Because you say you have lost over $400,000 since President Trump came into office. I mean, that is stunning. Tell, tell us what it's been like for you and for other farmers during the president's trade war? Well, every every time we, we think the market stabilized, I, I sold a lot of grain last last year at harvest for $5.70, and that was at a loss, and I, I felt bad doing it, but I didn't have any room for it. Well, it ended up, that, that was an awful good move, and uh, right now our market is 396 here locally. So it, it's, uh, at, at four at $4.40 a bushel, I lost seventy dollars an acre just putting my crop in this year, wow. and now we're down to three ninety six. Wow, you have farmed so, for what, forty years. But I mean, what about some of the younger farmers in your area? Is there a future in farming for them? You think? I don't. I don't see them making it. They don't have the equity that older guys like I do. And you know, it's kind of like telling all of America to throw away half their four hundred one k is what they're asking farmers to do right now, taking all our markets away from us. It's no different, you know, we build up our equity. We only own a lot of land, but we're kind of cash poor. And uh, they, uh, they, they put the hit on us here and, it's, and the young farmers don't have that equity to fall back on and, and do uh, loss loans like a lot of people are gonna have to do. Yeah, well, I'm using the words you said, you, what about your old guys? But how, how, how long can you hold out if things continue to go the way they're going? Well, you're almost kicking yourself in the rear end for not getting out two years ago. Uh, some guys did, and we thought they're crazy. It looks like it was a good move. Um, you're going to get to the point where no one's going to buy any machinery or anything, so what good is it going to do to sell out? It's, uh, I, I, I just, I, there's got to be an end. We were in, in D.C. last year, and top trade guys said that it's going to be at least six to eight years before we get our markets back, even if we do get some of these trade things done. Mm. China has started importing grain from elsewhere now. So even if the trade war ended tomorrow, would you, there's no guarantee that you'd be able to restart those relationships. You really, you said six to eight years, but it, you know, if, if this was over soon, you still think it's gonna take that long? I think we'll get back a little bit of the market in, uh, I, I don't know how much it would be, but it's, it's gonna take a lot of years to get our markets back. And, wow. And uh, our input costs are so high. Like this year, our, our wheat was down 50%, but our fertilizer went from $400 a ton to $600 a ton this year. What a major hit on a year that, that we took such a hit on our prices. Wow. And natural gas was at record lows, so there's no excuses for the fertilizer to go up. Hmm. Just that they can't. How do you feel about the administration's $16 billion farm bailout, though? <laughs> he, well... This one's a lot fairer than the last one. I think the last one, uh, top 10% farms took 70% of that payment. So it was kind of a payback to the buddy type of thing. But um, this one's set up better, but it's somewhat confusing because the county I'm in, we're gonna get $15 an acre back. And there's other counties in our state that are gonna get over $50 an acre. So it, it just seems odd why the difference in, in, in the amount that you're gonna get. Yeah. We're all taking a hit. Yeah. Listen, I know you're not a politician, you may not be that political, but if I can ask you a question about the political perspective here, farmers and other rural voters are a big part of the president's base. Now, you didn't vote for President Trump in 2016, but from conversations you are having with other folks, do you think the president is in danger of losing any of that support in 2020? Well, if he doesn't lose 100% of it from the farm belt, then then people are kind of crazy because uh, this is not going well for farmers at all. I mean, some of them are trying to be faithful because they made that decision and voted for him. But I'd have to say in the back of their minds, they're, they're just not very happy right now. Yeah. Well, Bob, listen, I want to thank you for sharing your perspective on all of this, okay? And listen, best of luck to you. We're all thinking about you, and you're welcome to come on anytime to uh, share your story if you want to talk about anything. Thanks so much.
Thank you. Thank you. I want to bring in now Arnold Campbell. He's the CEO of Kent International. I want to talk about the impact on the manufacturing sector. Okay. So good to have you on. Thank you very you much. You heard that conversation. He's very candid there. So give us, tell us what you have been experiencing, how much money this trade war has cost your company. What has this meant to you? Well, there's a, there's a lot of elements of our business. I mean, we are an importer principally until about five years ago. Uh, right now, about 15% uh, of our business is U.S. manufacturing. Uh, it's been very difficult for us because the um, we still need to import a tremendous amount of the component parts. You make bicycles. We make bicycles, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and when we import these parts or, or the, even the complete bicycles that we import, uh, there's always a time gap whenever we have a price when contracts with our customers to when uh, we can get price increases. So the so we have two things. You have the inflation uh, because of higher prices. Uh, actually, Senator Graham, I think, is the first one who really uh, definitively came out and admitted that, yes, uh, there's going to be a pain because of these uh, price increases. Yeah. Um, but we have this thing. We also have a terrible problem with cash flow because when we have to pay these import duties now, on all of these uh, component parts. Uh, we have to pay the money right away within two weeks. Uh, normally we get uh, 90, 100, 120 days to pay for our goods, but on the import duty we have to pay it right away. Yeah. Um, so there's just there's a lot of elements of it. But you've also had to lay off employees recently. How many, and is it because of the tariffs? It is. Uh, we had to lay off about 35 people down in our factory in South Carolina. Really? Yeah, we went from 145 to 110. Uh, we're hoping uh, if the market stabilized maybe early next year to be able to go back. But uh, we had lost business because with the much higher prices, I mean, we had bicycles that were selling at $100 before that are now 130 and bikes that were 150 that are now 180 190 dollars which meant less business. And so Because it costs more. And so because it costs more, and so our price had to be more. Well, that's the part where people, when, when, when um, ec economists say that it is a tax, that the American people are paying is because of the price. You're going to pay more for the product. Oh, it's definitely a tax on yeah. American people. So uh, one of the, the president's goals is to get manufacturing jobs uh, out of China back here in the United States, a goal that you share. Uh, but you're finding the tariffs themselves, it may be making it harder to do that. Explain that, please, to our audience. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So I was talking about for our business right now. Uh, we, we have a U.S. factory with American workers. Uh, when we import, um, oh, 60 or 70 percent of the parts, we're paying as much as 35 and 40% import duty now on these parts. It's not just the 25 plus this extra 5%. They're all ready, ready were 10% uh, import duty. But an emerging country like Vietnam, uh, when they go to buy these parts, which are still coming mostly from China, they don't pay any import duty. And when they bring the complete bicycles in, my competitors, uh, the complete bicycles in from these other countries, uh, they're not subject to those additional costs. So you... You said that China cheats, but do you have confidence that the president understands China, knows what he's doing, and can really get a good deal for America? I, I can't really comment on, on what he knows or don't. I don't know that. But I know for sure China has been cheating on foreign exchange for years. Uh, they're not playing fair. Uh, and actually, just within the past week, the currency in China moved 4%. Uh, that's not a normal... Uh, I mean, I have friends who think that China's cheating with as much as 20 and 30% on foreign exchange. But that's that's another thing. But this, uh, this trade war, though, is just not good for anybody. It's not good for the United States. And we heard from the farmers, right. but... How long can you hold out if this continues? Uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be fine. Uh, I mean, it's going to be less manufacturing. It's our goal that we want to. Actually, we very uh, proactively have uh, gotten together with 11 other American bicycle assemblers, and we're going to petition the U.S. government for complete tariff relief for us with the idea of building up... Um, right now, there's only about a half a million bicycles assembled in the United States. It's our goal as a coalition to bring that up to three or four million bicycles a year. And we can do that by getting tariff relief on the bicycle parts mm -hmm. and creating probably thousands of jobs.